Okay, so this is the video for Lab 10, Hess's Law. Honestly, this is more of a dry lab. We're trying to show you guys how to work these types of problems because they can be a challenge to a lot of students. So we're going to review what Hess's Law really is, and then we'll get into the rules for dealing with the individual reactions here, and then we'll solve a couple of problems. Now Hess's law is based off the fact that enthalpy is a state function and that means it doesn't matter how you get there, um, whether you do it in one step or several, you're going to have the same energy um, regardless of the path. It's like saying the, the trip between, you know, um, home and school, you can take many different roads but the destination is the same. Uh, the same thing for you know going up a flight of stairs. Whether you are skipping two two stairs at a time because you're in a hurry to get upstairs, or whether you just take them one at a time, you're still going to get up that that whole flight. So the real picture here is, um, and you can't see the reference down here, but it's from the OpenStax book in Unit five, uh, Chapter Five, is that it doesn't matter whether you go from reactant to product in one step or in two different step reactions. If you add up negative 11, negative 282, you still get the negative 393 regardless of how you do it. It's the same energy here. So just to kind of show you guys how this adds up, if we had a reaction like this, carbon solid plus oxygen gas reacts to make carbon dioxide. And that overall has an enthalpy of about negative 394 kilojoules. Now, sometimes a reaction like this can be very difficult to get started, whether it's a kinetics issue or something along those lines. Sometimes it's easier to do it in two steps. So let's look at how we could do this type of reaction in a two-step process. So we could have, instead of going in one full step, we could go first where carbon adds one oxygen, one half of the O2 is just one, to get carbon monoxide. And then carbon monoxide could add the other oxygen to get CO2. Now if we were to add these two reactions up, overall you're going to see, oops there we go, carbon one half plus one half is one, so one oxygen, and carbon dioxide it's the same reaction overall. Now your carbon monoxide is going to cancel because you have one on the left and one on the right. So you cancel it just like you would in a net ionic equation. Once you have your step reactions lined up so that you can just add these reactions together to get your target, you could add your enthalpies together to get the enthalpy of the target reaction. So the idea is you always want to line these up so that all you have to do is add. Now it's usually not going to be quite this easy where everything is on the left that's supposed to be on the left and everything that's on the right is supposed to be on the right. Um, sometimes you're going to have to manipulate them a little bit. And so when you're doing that, you want to kind of consider the reaction itself. If you're reversing a reaction, you're going to reverse the sign of delta H. If you multiply the reaction, you're going to multiply the delta H by that same number. If you end up dividing the reaction, you would divide the delta H, okay? And so it's a process whereby you want to um, just consider as you go through it, okay? Now generally the best way to work these type of problems is to look at your final goal. You look at that target reaction and then you go work backwards from there. Um, you want to kind of line up items in the step reactions. If you have a reactant, you want the reactant to be on the left. If you're looking at the, for the target reaction product, you want to make sure that that's on the right. Now, you may also need to multiply or divide to get the right number, um, just to kind of ensure that you're doing the right thing. But once you get those step reactions to add up to give the overall target, you could add your enthalpy values, and it's going to be the enthalpy of your target. Okay, so let's do a couple of these. And I always think it's better to start with something kind of straightforward. And um, so I have this. We have a target reaction of CH4 gas plus ammonia gas reacts to give hydrocyanic acid 
gas plus three moles of hydrogen gas. We're going to use these step reactions and their delta H's to find the enthalpy of the overall target. Now, honestly guys, this can get really messy. So I like to give myself enough room. You're probably going to want to have some extra notebook paper set to the side. And I will usually draw a line underneath of the entire thing, kind of like that. And before I start manipulating my step reactions, I rewrite that target because I just think it's kind of nice to have it in front of me as we go forward. And so that's going to give me a nice, easy way to follow. The other thing that I do is I keep all of my arrows in exactly a line so that you're not really trying to figure out what's left and what's right. It's going to be cut and dry here. Okay. At this point, we can go ahead and start evaluating. So let me consider here. Let's end this. Now, if I wanted to do this, I'm going to look at this target and let's make this a little bit bigger. I've got methane and ammonia reacting to form hydrocyanic acid and hydrogen gas. Now I'm going to go through, I usually start at the beginning just because I'm a little OCD and I'm going to go through all of my step reactions until I find methane. And so I don't see it yet. Oh, there it is. Now this is on the right of the arrow but I want it on the left because it's on the left in the target. So I need to take this overall reaction and reverse it. You can kind of see I didn't want to write this out and be messy so I used a table. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reverse this reaction. So I'm going to put my reactants or what was my products on the reactant side. I'm going to take what was my products and put it, I mean what was my reactants and put it on the product side. And then because I reversed this reaction, I'm going to have to reverse this delta H. So this is now going to be plus 74.9. Now generally guys, because um, I want to make sure I don't lose my place, I'm going to go ahead and just mark this off. Uh, where's strike through? Or we'll just make it really faint. So I know I've dealt with that one, okay? Now, I've worked on methane. Let's go into ammonia. So I'm going to go through and look for everywhere that I see ammonia. I see it there. I don't see it anywhere else, so I'm going to go ahead and continue with this. If you see it in more than one place, like if you, you can kind of see that um, I have hydrogen in both of these, I would not deal with something like that until the end anyway. But I want ammonia. Ammonia is on the product side here, but in my target reaction it's on the reactant side. So I need to go ahead and reverse this reaction as well. So I'm going to put the products on the reactant side, the reactants on the product side, and that means I'm going to have to reverse my delta H. So let's go ahead and do that. Control C. So that means I now have 2 ammonia going to N2 plus 3H2. Because I reversed the overall sign of uh, direction of the reaction, I have to reverse my delta H. So this is now plus 91.8. And so I've used that one. All right, so now let's go through and look. We've got uh, methane and ammonia. I don't have HCN anywhere though, so that can be a problem. Um, what I'm going to have to do is, um, is use this reaction to get my HCN right here, okay? Now it is on the right side, so I'm going to leave this reaction just as it is for now. Oops. Eh, why not? Because I left the reaction alone, I'm going to leave my delta H alone, and I have 270.3. Now I'm not done, because at this point I want to go ahead and confirm that I have the right number of everything. 
And so if we look at our target, I want one methane. And I have one methane. I want two, uh, I'm sorry, I have one ammonia, but I actually have two, and there's nothing over here to cancel it. So there's a problem with this one. Now you can do this all in once, or you can do it separately. Um, it just depends, so I'll show you both ways. Um, because I only want one, I need to divide this reaction by two. So what we're going to do, if we divide all of this, and actually we're going to go ahead and move this up. just to kind of make it nice and easy to follow. I would actually start rewriting this just to be clear, but it's up to you. So because I'm going to be dividing this by two, I'm going to make a note over here. Anything you do to the reaction, you have to do to the delta H. So I'm going to go ahead and divide all of my co coefficients by um, two. Oops. probably a little bit easier to see this this way. Control C. So then I'm going to have to divide this one by two. That's going to give us three divided by two, which is either one and a half or probably easier to deal with for the moment is just three halves. We divided the reaction by two, so we need to divide the delta H by two. 91.8 divided by two is 45.9. Okay. Now, um, I've got one ammonia. Let's check out our HCNs. Same thing here. We have two HCNs in our step reactions. We only want one. So we really need to divide this whole thing by two as well. Is that line there it is. There we go. So I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna say one half of this. Two divided by two is just one. Two divided by two is just one. And then two divided by two is just one. And so that's really our coefficients there. Because we had to divide the reaction by two, we have to divide this number by 2. So we have 270.3 divided by 2 um, gives us 135, eh, we'll say 0 0.2 because we need to round for sig figs. Now at this point we need to go ahead and check that all of the extra stuff has um, really started to, to work out here. So actually guys, this is a one up here, so this should be this should be one half down here. Um, small mistake there. Okay, so let's make sure that all of our coefficients are going to cancel. okay? So if we were to add this up, at the moment we would have methane plus ammonia plus one half H2 plus carbon plus one half nitrogen reacting to form carbon plus two H2 plus one half N2 plus three halves H2 plus HDN. But we can cancel anything that is the same on both sides. So let's go ahead and do that. So first things first, um, I see a carbon here and a carbon here. Now I also see one half N2 here and here. So 
So I can get rid of those. I also see a one half hydrogen. Now I have two and three halves, so I'm just going to cancel out one of those. Now if I cancel out one half hydrogen, there's a couple of ways to do this. Um, getting rid of one of the halves is going to give us two over two, or just leave us with one. Okay, so however you want to think about it here, it's totally going to be fine. Uh, too, too light. Okay, so now we can add up everything. We've got methane plus ammonia. There we go. Reacting to form. Our hydrogen gas. We've got two plus one, so really we've got three here, plus our HCN. So we've got our target. It looks just the way it should, which means we can now add these up to get our delta H. So here we've got, oops, come on, plus 74.9, plus 45.9, plus 135.2, and it should give us, um, actually I think we just had something out and clear in there. So. Um, 74.9 plus 45.9 plus 135.2 is 256. Um, sig figs we should go all the way to one decimal place because that is what is limited here. So this is actually plus 256.0 or 256.0. Okay? Let's do one more. Here's another situation where we've got our target reaction and we've got our step reactions. This one's kind of a challenge, um, but it's kind of nice. And so we're going to go ahead and start the same way. We're going to look at our target and see if we can find where these things are in our step reactions. So our target is two moles of aluminum solid, react with three moles of chlorine gas to produce two moles of aluminum chloride solid. Now notice guys the phases of matter they are actually important because sometimes you have to dissolve it before you can precipitate it or sometimes you have to dissolve it before you can evaporate it that kind of thing. Our step reactions are to aluminum reacting with six moles of HCl aqueous to produce two moles of aluminum chloride plus three moles of H2 gas. We have HCl gas going to HCl aqueous H2 gas plus chlorine gas going to two moles of HCl gas and aluminum chloride going to aluminum chloride dissolved. Okay. Now there's a couple of issues here. If you notice HCl isn't even in our reaction. Doesn't matter. We're going to use it to cancel. We're going to still focus on what is in this target reaction and try and line up our step reactions that way. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is go through and look for aluminum solid. I like to start on the left. I don't know what to say. So I'm going to make sure that I only see it in one reaction because if I see it in more than one place, it can get confusing. I do. I only see it here. So I'm going to use this top reaction to line up my aluminum. Now aluminum is in the reactant side here, reactant side here. We're good to go. And if you notice, I even have two, so it's the right number. So I'm not going to have to do anything to this reaction anymore. So in the last one we lined it up and then we went through and divided. Here I'm going to focus on the numbers as much as I can as we go. This doesn't, this isn't always the best way though. A lot of the time it's easier to um, check the numbers at the end just to be sure. 
but I'll show you both ways. Some people like it, each one. All right, so I left the reaction alone, so I'm leaving my delta H alone. I messed with that one. All right, so aluminum is good on the right side. Let's look for chlorine. I only see it in this uh, reaction right here. It is on the right side. So I'm going to go ahead and use this reaction as it is. Now, you guys, you can kind of tell here. Um, I have three chlorines in the target, only one here. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply this whole thing by three. Because I need to have three in the final reaction anyway. Now, anything I do to the reaction itself, I have to do it to the, uh, the delta H. So, um, what I'm going to do, control C, I'm multiplying by three, so that gives me three H2 plus three chlorine gas going to two times three is actually going to be six. And if I multiply the reaction by three, I need to multiply this by three, and I can't do that in my head. So we have negative 1845 times three. So negative 5,279, four sig figs, four sig figs, okay. Oops. I'm going to leave a space here. Yeah, okay. Five, five, three, five. Um, four sig figs, four sig figs, we're good. Okay, so now let me mark this one off so that I don't get confused. Good habits, guys. Um, for your paper at in lab, um, it's just easiest to mark one line through so that if you have to go back and recheck, you can, um, or cover it alternatively, either way. Okay, so now let's go through and look for our uh, next thing in the target, which is aluminum chloride. Now I need aluminum chloride solid. So I'm going to go through and look for aluminum chloride solid, and I have it right here. It's nowhere else, thankfully, so we're good. So I need this on the product side, but it's actually on the reactant. So I'm going to reverse this reaction. Oops. Which means I'm going to have to reverse this, re the sign of this as well. Now if I look, I actually need two in my target. I only have one. So let's just reverse it and then we'll go ahead and multiply by two in the same step. So reversing it here. which would give us plus 323. See why I like the spaces, the negatives kind of blend. But I also need to multiply the entire thing by two. So I need two of these, two of these, and you can probably do this in your head, but just in case, 323 times two is 646. Okay, so now honestly the impulse is why do I even need this reaction? It's not in my target. But if you start to look, we've got 6 HCl aqueous here, 6 HCl gas over here. We have to cancel those or they will be in our final and we don't want that. 
So we're going to use this reaction to cancel things we don't want. Okay. Now I don't want the aqueous on this reactant side, so I'm going to try and cancel it by having aqueous on my product side, which thankfully in this reaction it is. It's on the right. But I need to cancel out 6, and I only have 1. So I'm going to multiply this entire reaction by 6. Oops. If whatever I do to the reaction, I have to multiply or do the same thing to our uh, delta H value. So now we have 6 HCl's gas form times 6 HCl aqueous or reacting to form 6 8 6 HCl, come on, there we go, um, aqueous. And then again, I'm not going to do this in my head, negative 74.8 times 6 is going to give us a negative, um, hmm, I'll use the minus, 74.8 times 6, but it was negative, gives me negative 448.8 three sig figs, three sig figs, so this should actually be negative 449. Okay, so let's just double check that everything lines up the way that it should. Control C. So I have HCl, Hold on a second. Actually, guys, this should be opposite because I have gas. Nope, it is. We're good. Aqueous and aqueous, gas, gas. Okay, so we can cancel our 6 HCl aqueous because we have 6 here and 6 here. So let's go ahead and move. Okay, this is too small because I can't move it. That one. And this one and we have H2, three H2s here and here. So we're going to cancel that one. We have aluminum chloride aqueous, two of them on each side. So we're going to do that. Hold on. Um, and then we have our HCl gases that can cancel. Oops, did I not move it? There it is. Okay, so let's go ahead and look. So far, I think we've canceled everything we don't need. We have aluminum, two aluminums, three chlorine gases, going to two AlCl3. So this adds up to give us our target. So that's good. Um, now we just need to add these values up here to get the delta H of our overall reaction. So we have uh, 1049 negative plus a negative uh, 5535 plus 646 and plus 449 negative. And if we add that up we should get, so we get negative 6,387. Um, this is limited to a whole number, so that's what we're going to get. So remember guys, when you're doing these reactions, start with the target, okay? Um, start lining things up on the right way. Really the, the biggest things to do is to make sure your notes are really even and organized. Uh, don't be afraid of using more space, so if you need to go to notebook paper, do it. And avoid things that are in more than one reaction until the end. It's up to you whether you multiply as you go or if you wait till the end. Um, it just depends on how you like to think of, of these puzzles. Okay? 
Um, good luck, and I hope this helps.